Well, today's the first day for starting the fiberglass, and uh, we don't do an awful lot of this type of work right here, but it's actually kind of fun. You know, really, we're just giving the boat a quick coat of thinned resin. We roll the cloth out, it's already been cut to size, and then uh, really, you just pour the resin on there once you've got it mixed. We've thinned it some, and uh, we're just using like these plastic trowels to spread it out. They used to do a lot of this type of work years ago, and they fiberglassed over almost every wooden boat there was, and never really worked out that good because the boats weren't built to do it. But this boat is built to accept the fiberglass. It's just going to add to the structure, really. This layer's not going around the chine, but there's going to be two layers that will go around the chine. So we're trimming it off at the chine later on. This layer is going right over the keel, and the keel doesn't stick up. So it's a structural element as well over the center line. It adds a rigidity to the hull. Well, there is our first layer applied on the port side, and it's dried, the fiberglass. And uh, it worked out really well. We used the epoxy resin and we thinned it so that it would go right through and the alcohol makes it penetrate the cloth much easier. Otherwise, the cloth would kind of have like a whitish appearance, which to me means it's not totally saturated. This is totally saturated. It came out really, really nice. You can see the black line that I put uh, along that stringer because I want to see through that cloth in order to fasten the next layer down, I want to hit that stringer with fastening. So we have a little different method than you might think. I'm going to be showing it to you on the other side of getting the cloth really down as flat as this. This has really came out really nice. If you had just resined it out, it would have been awful rough. And I'm going to be showing you like that on the other side. But uh, all there is left really right now is the stitching sticking up. That stitches the uh, biaxial cloth together. You can see the stitching in this area right here. It's in this direction here. And uh, you can't get rid of that unless you either sand it off or scrape it off. I'm not so sure it's even fiberglass, the stitching itself, so it comes off there pretty easy. I don't do a lot of sanding, I don't want to make much dust, so I got a scraper and I've got it nice and sharp, and it does the trick. We just scrape around a little bit, and uh, maybe there's some imperfections in the cloth. Where the, where the last layer uh, it has got some stripes that might be a few thousandths of an inch thicker, but you know, the scraper will take care of all of that kind of stuff. Maybe you can see the line in it right here in this direction. That was kind of a lump in the cloth itself that you couldn't uh, get out. So I'm going to do a little bit of scraping, and uh, I've sharpened my scraper. I can show you how to do it. I've shown you how to do it before. Now when I'm scraping, I scrape it in a couple of different directions because one direction doesn't just do the trick exactly right. 90 degrees to the stitch is pretty bumpy and then you kind of turn on a little angle and it smooths it right up. It's the simplest thing in the world to do. It's a little bit of effort required, but hey, everything is effort when you're building a wooden boat. The thing is, I try to make it as easy on myself as possible and this is pretty much it right here. <laughs> And that took care of that area just like that. Nothing to it. No power equipment, no sanding, you know, very small amount of effort really. I'm just about ready to roll out the cloth on the starboard side on the bottom here. Now, uh, that's a pretty simple operation. We're going to roll it out dry and cut it off. But uh, before I do that, I want to show you the cloth itself. This is 1708 fiberglass cloth. It's biaxial. It's a biaxial cloth. It's got fibers in it running in this direction and fibers running in, in this direction. The other thing that's nice about this cloth is that on the next layers, not this particular layer, but on the next layers, you want the strands going diagonally across the chine like this and around the corner and the other way this way. And that cloth provides for that. You wouldn't want a monodirectional cloth because it would only cross the chine in one direction. You put the next layer down, it does exactly the same thing. Unless you turn the cloth 90 degrees, then you get seams across the hull. The other thing is, is it crosses the transom the same way. The strands are going across that way and they're going across that way. Same thing here. So, you know, at this point on this layer, we're going to cut it off right even with the chine. But on the next layer, it's really important and it's stitched together with a stitching onto like a scattergrain mat on the back. Now, I used to wonder why is that mat there, and I've asked a few people, and people have asked me too. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can say is uh, some people think it's for 
help in the adhesion and different things. I would say it's to keep the cloth organized because without that mat on the back, you can squirrel the cloth all over the place and lose the direction of the weave and just make it, you know, visually a mess and very hard to deal with. There is cloth that does not have the mat on the back, you know, so I, I opted for this stuff right here because it is easier to deal with. And when you're spreading it, you don't lose the weave, the directions. This is the right cloth right here. So basically, I'm just going to roll it out one quick one. And it's perfect. Yeah, just right, just right. And actually, I'm going to cut it off like this from the edge. Now I'm going to cut off the excess cloth with the electric scissors. Now these things are great because uh, there's very little effort required and it goes real quickly. And all I can say about the scrap is we roll it up because we don't want to fold it because it actually breaks the fibers. So if we wanted to use that scrap for anything else, you know, we want to keep it rolled. If you tried to do this with normal scissors, you'd be a little worn out by the time you got to the other end. That's not my normal exercise. So these electric scissors really make it easy and they make it quick. It's almost laughable how good they work. Now we cut it off and we left it a little bit long so when we resin it out we can kind of tug on the edge of the cloth there just to pull the cloth down tight. The other thing it stops you from doing is disturbing the edge of the cloth right here because I want the weave to be very organized at that corner and then once the thing is totally dry or very close to dry I'm going to cut it off again right at the very edge. You know, it won't be exactly accurate the way we roll it out the same way within a quarter of an inch or anything. So we get a little excess on each side. And, uh, you know, you can see right now that you can't see through this cloth to see that black line that I put down in there. But uh, once you saturate it, you'll be able to see right through it. So uh, it just turns it clear. And up here, there's another black magic marker line right at the edge of our overlap. So we're going to resin the cloth out just past that and make sure it's nice and neat. And once it starts going off, I'll be able to cut it off right at that line because I'll be able to see that one too. You know, both of those lines will appear right before your very eyes when we saturate it. I wouldn't want a whole bunch of cloth on there to have to, you know, sand down. So we're going to control that overlap just right and I'm going to cut it off when it's wet. So basically this piece of cloth right here is the bottom side of the cord material. We're going to put another layer planking over it and cloth over that, and it's going to be a cord hull right here. Composite cord hull. There it is. We're going to roll it back up from this end and put it aside. Well, we're set to go, so we're going to start mixing epoxy. And uh, today we're using Total Boat High Performance Epoxy. It's a two-to-one mix, and we've got these mixing containers. We're going to use a liter of resin on this first mix, and then we're going to add half a liter of hardener. We're starting with the resin here. You have to be kind of careful how you go about it. As you go, you go around in circles because otherwise you're waiting for that viscous, you know, to come up to the lines because accuracy is important when you mix in epoxy glue. Now we're going to mix in a hardener. We're going to do the same exact thing with that. We're going to start pouring a little aggressively, but when it gets near the mark, we'll start going around in circles a little bit and come up to the mark nice and gentle. I've always liked two to one mixes. They don't have an amine blush, an amine hardener that's made out of ammonia, actually, with electron missing. Somehow, they've got it so that no amine blush rises to the surface, and I think that's a fantastic thing because you can apply other coats to it, no matter how dry it is or if it's semi-dry or otherwise. Now, we're going to mix it pretty aggressively because you do have to scrape the bottom of the cup when you're mixing a lot, and you have to scrape the sides because you want to get the resin mixed into the hardener, both of them together. You can't just leave a deposit of resin around the edges of the cup or on the bottom. You know, mix around the middle. That doesn't work. You mix around the side. It works so much better the more you mix it. Now, we're going to pick it up and take a look at it, let it run off our mixing stick and just take a look and see how thick we think it is. I know I'm going to thin it, but first I'm just going to look at it and see how it runs. 
then I'm going to add a little bit of alcohol and I'm saying a little bit because I want to see how it affects it and make sure you mix the alcohol in really well it doesn't seem like it's going to mix in when you first start mixing but it does just get a little aggressive and then all of a sudden the alcohol will disappear and the thing will mix up and uh, mix it a little bit more even after that until I get it kind of you know it's kind of guesswork here but it doesn't really matter if you put a little bit too much in or not quite enough I want to make sure I put enough so it saturates the cloth very easily. Well we've got our epoxy mixed and we're going to head right over to the boat. The first thing for us to do is to start right up at the black line up there because you know uphill from there the resin won't run. So we're going to work our way downhill and uh, we just pour it on and spread it around with a rubber trowel. Keep a reservoir because that just makes it spread out that much easier in front of you. We just want to get enough on there. It doesn't matter if we get a little bit too much because when we do roll the cloth out it'll just soak up any excess from the uh, wood up into the cloth from the bottom side so it's nice to see the wood grain appear under the resin like that it's like the varnishing or something it's awesome looking and what we really don't want is any dry spots at all we want to make sure that we're covering every bit of it and try to get it spread around as good as we can back aft is pretty simple and quick and then up forward you'll have to be a little more careful but uh, you know we've got paper on the side of the boat so if some runs down the side of the boat a little bit here and there we can just scrape it right back up and put it up on the surface so whatever we have to do but we're not making a mess and as you go along with this rubber trowel it starts to thicken a tiny bit so because the alcohol starts drying right out of it so it makes it get into the wood quick and then it thickens up just about the right time for us to roll the cloth out on top. And the only thing you have to be careful about here is that you keep it kind of stretched because you wouldn't want it to roll out short and make sure it's on that black line or covering the black line at the top. We've got excess cloth at the top and the bottom so you know we've got it made there. We're starting at the keel saturating the cloth again because that's the easiest thing to do. The resin runs downhill. We wouldn't want to pull all the resin uphill so we pour it at the top and uh, some of it runs down and it just helps us get it uh, saturated at the bottom so you know we're able to go on the other side of the boat and kneel and uh, work it because the other side of the boat's already dry and that's what you have to do we're trying to make sure we get the glue on there but we don't want to get in it while we're doing it we just keep going and going and you can go back and forth some places get saturated a little bit easier than others so you got to work at it a little bit but as you get going you can see the saturation and uh, the lines start to appear under the cloth just as nice as can be it's working out really nicely we've got a few corners to do get the cloth to the edges all the resin get it matted down as close as we can we can be pretty aggressive with these rubber trowels you have to be actually very aggressive now that the cloth is starting to get a little bit tacky I can take the electric scissors and cut it off really within a sixteenth of an inch of the blue tape along the chine and along that black line near the keel pretty easy to do it really saves the day the electric scissors look at that now it's looking pretty neat we're gonna trowel it a little bit more make sure it's saturated everywhere and you can be very aggressive with these trowels without upsetting the weave that's one thing about stitched together cloth like this you don't upset the weave easily once the cloth gets very very tacky I'm taking a squirt bottle and spraying it with water it provides a lubricant so I can take a metal trowel and slide all around with a metal trowel and ramp the cloth down really tight and just make sure that all the grain orientation in it is perfect and it makes it nice and flat really nice and flat so I don't have to do any sanding to get a surface that I can glue to and then what we're going to do is pull down all the paper and just get it looking like a boat again at this point we've got both sides of the bottom glassed and uh, it's got the 1708 fiberglass cloth which is uh, bi-directional we love it that's the best cloth for the job and uh, we've used the uh, uh, high performance two to one epoxy resin worked out really good we thinned it a little bit to get it to really get down into the cloth so we could see underneath it and everything but it just helps saturation we've got another layer of the keel on top here we put that on in two layers like I said so the first layer of planking butts up to the first one then we glassed right across the center line I, I mean this thing is glassed right across it wouldn't work if we put this keel like this and tried to glass over it. You just can't make those kind of corners and different things. So that made it really easy. We've got the next layer of keel down on top of there. 
I've trimmed uh, the very forward part of the forefoot area right here, just that last little bit that it needed to look absolutely sweet. And uh, you know, it wasn't much, sixteenth of an inch or so. And as you take it down in here, it was kind of planned to do that so that the progression would get a little bit wider. In here, it's so wide and it gets a little wider and a little wider as it goes up and then it ends up being this wide. And then I just wanted to show you this. This, this will be the last plank butted up to the keel like that and then we'll have a plank sitting there like that and what happens when you surface that one off you get this exact corner right here going all the way down and fading right into the same thickness as the top side plank so you know it's been worked out and then after it's all glassed over with two layers we're going to be putting a cap over that that'd be like a wooden cap so it'll look very much like a wooden boat with a little cap on it and uh, so that's what we're up to there so our next effort really is to get the second layer of planking on the bottom glued down on top of the fiberglass and uh, we've made quite an effort so far. We've got 41 planks already fit up to the keel on both sides and cut off the right length and fit together and all of that stuff. So basically we have to gather it all up and start gluing it down but uh, it's pretty much the same sort of thing the way we cut them and fit them and everything. We'll be showing you a few more. There's one little area right in here where you have to fit them on both ends. It's not hang over and cut off until you get up to here and then it's hang over and cut off in reverse because you fit them to here and they hang over at the top. So you know a little bit different right in here. We're going to be showing you a new way that we're going to fasten these things down on a temporary basis the second layer that is and then what we're going to do how we're going to smooth it up and you know how we're going to fare it out and get it ready for the two layers of 1708 that are going over the top of it it's working out really nice and uh, you know we're just looking forward to keeping going there's all kinds of things i'm going to show you in some of the next videos how to trim the fiberglass so perfectly without sanding you know we didn't do hardly any sanding at all i did try a sanding it in a few little spots but you know, it wasn't something we had to get into too deeply and, uh, you know, it's just, it's been great. The other thing I want to show you is this. This is an example of what made me think of this whole construction in the first place. This is a truss. This boat, the full length of the bottom, every foot of it is a truss. You know, I mean, here's a truss right here, three inches wide that I made. And uh, I'm going to show you how strong it is. It's incredibly strong. This is the lowest angle in the boat. As you get up forward, uh, the angle on the top of the truss gets to be quite a bit different and it's quite a bit stronger. But this section right here, being the most vulnerable section, is incredibly strong. There's no bend in it. There's no bend in the bottom of this boat. It doesn't flex. This is the strongest, stiffest boat that I can possibly imagine in wood of this size. So we're just going to show you this thing and uh, we're going to get back to work as soon as we can because the beat has to go on. Let me give you a little demonstration about how rigid the bottom of this boat is going to be. I made this before I even made the model. This thing is like eight years old. We've been torturing it for eight years and haven't been able to break it yet. It's a truss like I said and uh, here's a little example of it. It's only like three inches wide but you cannot bend that at all. It's not even fastened together. It's only glued together on the ends and in the center right here. Now, that thing is rigid. Can you imagine the length of the whole boat that way? Let me flip it over. This would be pressure from the bottom of the boat, like the ocean pushing on it. You cannot appreciate any movement in that all, at all as you, as you force it. You just can't. It's amazingly strong.